I saw the Dragon Ball Super movie, which, you know, really cool um, that they released a canon movie in America when we're still 40 episodes behind um, the end of the series. Because it takes place after the series, and you're like, oh, is the world going to survive? Of course it's going to survive. Goku saves everything. Always. But it's like, come on. I at least want some suspense thinking, oh, maybe uh, Goku's going to screw up and um, the world's going to end. You know? Like, come on, Funimation. Like... I get it that people want to see it and then people are caught up on the Japanese end but if they're caught up on the Japanese end why not release the movie as a um, as a sub instead of a dub you know like but I was gonna miss it like it's in theaters I'm gonna go watch Dragon Ball Z in theaters why not I've I can spend money on a Tuesday. There's a lot of like nerdy, sweaty dudes in that theater. Ugh. Remind me to get a private showing next time. Welcome back to Rewind with Beach Witty because I feel like we've already done this one. Today, we have a new segment. It's called winemaking. We're going to learn some parts of winemaking, which I feel like we've touched on many of times while we were doing harvest vlogs. And this is going to feel a lot like harvest vlogs. Um, but I did my best to kind of document, you know, gold post moments during harvest. So here we go. We're going to be talking about red wine. Fermentation. And this will all lead back up to us going back into harvest. And maybe you'll find a way to do your own harvest. And sorry for all you Southern Hemisphere people where harvest is just around the corner. So this is going to be weighty. This is going to be long. It's going to be hard. While there are many ways to make wine, uh, all of them are generally generally the same. Like little things will be different, but the concept, like the the main concept, is there. For reds, you take some grapes, you let them extract color from the skins, ferment them, press them off, put them through secondary and malolactic fermentation, and you age them and bottle them, and voila, red wine. So, how does it get from grape to wine? Step one, harvesting the grapes. When the grapes reach the right sugar and acid levels, uh, and more importantly, they taste good, uh, we harvest them. Step one, done. Step two, sorting. At the winery I work for, we use a two-table sorting method. The grapes come in as full clusters. Across the top table, we sort out any clusters that look overripe or underripe, and of course, things that shouldn't be there, like leaves, branches, or twigs, bugs, etc. Uh, it then goes through a distemmer, and the grapes come out as single berries on the second table, where they're again scrutinized, looking especially for small green berries, and other things that may have made it past the first table and the stemmer. Uh, they come to rest in a macro bin uh, for fermentation. Step three, cold soaking. Before fermentation starts, red wines get to sit and soak in their skins and pulp. This process is known as 
pre-fermentation maceration, or more commonly as cold soaking. Essentially, this step is believed to extract and stabilize color uh, before the fermentation starts. That's how it ends up looking red, because as we know, all wine kind of looks like white wine before it's had skin contact. Uh, the process usually takes about 48 hours, but time can vary on other factors. Step four, fermentation. Yeast is then added, uh, unless you're using native fermentation, where you let the yeast that rode in with the grapes uh, do their work. But this uh, can result in stuck fermentations. Uh, there's plus and sides and downsides to using native. We don't personally do it. We use yeast that has been cultivated to withstand the higher alcohol levels that we generally face out here in a warmer climate, like past Robles, due to our lower rain and higher heat. Fermentation then lasts anywhere from a few days to several weeks, preferably somewhere in between the two. A couple weeks would be perfect. A cap will form from the skins, and it must be punched down two to three times a day uh, to release the heat and to keep the cap from molding over, forming bacteria, and uh, preventing hydrogen sulfide production. And of course, to continue helping with color and color extraction. Step five, pressing off. When the cap falls, which means the cap no longer pushes a cap, there is no cap. Extended maceration is over and it is time to press off the wine, uh, as you can see here. There's also multiple types of presses. We have a pneumatic press, uh, which has a bladder inside of it, expands, gently pressing uh, the skins against the steel drum that's grated so that the wine will come out and the skins will stay in. Step six, secondary and malolactic fermentation. If the wine isn't at the desired dryness, fermentation continues until it reaches that dry state. Uh, malolactic fermentation is then started, it, which, as you know, as you know, is a process to convert malic acid, which you could find coated on, say, sour warheads, to lactic acid, which lactic lactose, and say, smoother, more palpable acid. Finally, step seven, putting it to rest. Once it's finished with its fermentation, the wine will be racked off and uh, then barreled down or stored in some sort of container. We use barrels. Um, it's just what we do. That's what most people do. If you're a larger winery, you might have stainless steel tanks. The wine's been racked off and then returned to whatever they're, they've been staying in since they've been pressed. Or new new items maybe a brand new barrel i don't know i'm gonna get i'm gonna get off topic if i keep just allowing myself to, to free form here that's the process of red wine fermentation if you have any questions leave them in the comments below i love it when you talk to me i love talking to you it's it's a fun thing please stay tuned throughout the week because this is the first full week of Rewind since we've been back. And I uh, appreciate you watching. Either way, my name is B. Schwitty. This has been Rewind with me, B. Schwitty. And I want to remind you to comment, share, like, and subscribe. <laughs> we'll catch you.